Hi, Pada out of Sacramento. I'm from the United States. Uh, I'm fighting Luan Davis. I'm in the semifinal, and his fight style is a little bit uh, unorthodox. Um, I think I'm, I'm pretty well-rounded in all, all suits. I think my wrestling is definitely a, a dominant. That's where I know if I take the fight, I'm gonna win that. Uh, this semifinal is gonna put me in the, the finals for the UFL. And being in the finals is a, is a big opportunity for me, just putting a big light on me and being able to, to win the first UFL championship. I see my hand getting raised in a lot of different ways. Uh, I've, I visualize this uh, in submission, a knockout, or just ground and pound. There's lots of different ways that this can go. And it kind of depends on it, but I'm ready for anything. My name is Luan Davis. I am from Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm fighting out of the United States. I'm fighting Ryan Loader. Um, why am I excited about fighting Ryan Loader? Um, it's because he's a high-level wrestler, and I've been preparing my whole career to uh, face high-level wrestlers, and so this is a great opportunity to finally put that to the test and use those skills that I've been developing over the years. This being the semifinals and being to able to fight in the finals, uh, the next fight, um, it means a lot to me uh, because, first of all, I, I love this organization. It's a beautiful organization. You guys have done so much to help the fighters. Um, but also, to me, it will be a, uh, a symbol that I'm ready to take on that next level of competition and that uh, all the years of work that I've put in um, I paid off. I think um, I would be able to deliver a TKO. Um, I'm assuming around the second round, if not the second, then maybe the third, but the TKO is definitely coming. Set and ready we are now for this middleweight semi uh, semi-final. Ryan Loder, five and one, taking on Luan Davis. Let's get it underway. Let's welcome the fighters. So here he comes, finally making that walk. And I say finally, Frank, because he was scheduled to fight in Memphis, UFL 2. His opponent had to come out, but they were unable to find him a replacement. He still stepped on the scales, made the weight to make sure he stayed in the Grand Prix, made sure he still kept that spot to get this semi-final opportunity. But he had to sit on the sidelines, and he sat and he watched Ryan Loder have his fight against Leon Shabazian. And he actually said that was really excited by that. He thought the performance from uh, Ryan Loder was so good and it really showed what he was as a martial artist that wrestling pedigree that all-american background and he said that excites me he said because i am a mixed martial artist i have of course focused my camp on you know certain positions where ryan is very good that i will have to be switched on at. he said but i've been training takedown defense my whole martial arts life my whole martial arts career this is where i get to test if i've been doing the right things this is where i get to test if i am as good as i think i am so that's a great motivation, right? Not being scared of some of these skills, but being motivated to see if you have the answers to unlock that chest. Absolutely the best way to look at an opponent. When you see someone has a skill set, if you're a student or you're an athlete, or you're, it's like, oh man, I'm, this makes me nervous and I'm worried about it, that could be a problem. If he sits and goes, look at the opportunity, my guy's dangerous at X, Y, or Z, I get to go ahead and now challenge myself with that. See if I can defeat it, beat it, and build upon myself. That's a phenomenal mindset to have that Luan has. But he, very obvious to show that he does. He's a guy that's moved away from home, moved up to a camp like Jackson Week, to put himself out of his comfort area. And that's scary. You're you know, going off to a different place, a city, you don't know anybody, and just following your dreams. And mixed martial arts isn't a dream where it's easy. It's like, oh, we're going to college. You know, this might pay off for you. We don't know, you don't know. There's a lot of sacrifices, a lot of people doubting you. This is something to be a lot of self-motivation. So, Luan Davis finally inside the UFL cage. Now it's time to welcome back his opponent.
coming out to the Halloween music and coming out in his Halloween mask. This is Ryan Loder, and quite frankly, he truly is a nightmare. You look at the skill set that he provides. Five and one as a pro, coming out of Sacramento. He is a division one All-American. He is the elite of the elite, Frank, and he has really transposed that, translated it into his mixed martial arts style. And the reason he wears the mask, the Halloween mask, he made his pro debut. Pro debut against a guy called James Porter. He finished him with a slam in 12 seconds on Halloween. So that's why he takes this. He takes this mask, he takes the whole thing. He says it's a sign. And when you are fighting somebody like this who has relentless pressure, you know, exquisite technique and execution, he truly is the thing of nightmares. Yeah, and also Ryan Loader has a perfect combination of what kind of skill sets you have that you need to work on and build upon and already have, and what camp you work with. Not every camp has all the same strengths and weaknesses. And I really feel that another advantage that he has is that Ryan Loader goes and trains at Alpha, Team Alpha Male. Almost all those guys have a wrestling background first in college and come over and add to it. So now he's in a room with a bunch of other guys that do all the same takedowns, all the same setups, and know how to tell him to translate it over and to add in extensions to make it work for him in MMA. And that right now is why he's such a very dangerous fighter in his ground and pound ways. So here we go. Let's get this one underway. Both inside the case. Let's hand it to Michael Vale. Yes, our next round is the semifinal in the UFL Middleweight Grand Prix. Scheduled for three five-minute rounds. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. He stands six feet, three inches tall, official weight, 185.2 pounds. He has a professional record of five wins, no losses. Fighting out of Atlanta, Georgia, please welcome Luan the Alchemist Davis. And now his opponent across the cage, fighting in the red corner. He stands six feet, one inches tall, official weight, 185.8 pounds. He has a professional record of five wins, one loss. Fighting out of Sacramento, California, let's welcome Ryan Loader. The referee in charge, Joe Coca. Tail of the tape here between the two, five and oh, the perfect record of Luan Davis on the line against five and one Loader. Davis, six foot three against the six foot one loader. He will also, Davis, have that reach advantage scheduled for three five minute rounds in the middleweight Grand Prix. Let's get this one underway. Davis, black and red shorts, blue corner taking on Ryan Loader, white shorts, red corner. Me, Brian Lacey, alongside Frank Mir. And off we go. Oh, going for the body kick again. We got that Southpaw versus Orthodox. Oh, just looking for this takedown. This is what he's trying to do. And he did this to Leon Shabazian as well. Charged him to the fence. And once he got him down, Frank. Oh, he grabbed that rear ankle so hard. That was impressive. Now, this will be the test the one Davis was talking about. This is where he's going to find out if he has the answers to this style, this D1 All-American wrestling style. Yeah, definitely. Ryan Loder is going to bring that to the table. He's get a great wrestler in college, collegiately. And now he translated over to his MMA career. And you saw there, he was doing level changes. It isn't just like he was just desperately taking shots. He's throwing it with great combination of MMA. So Luan has a great challenge in front of him. If he can stop this here, he's going to be somebody who's going to be known to be able to stop this style of fighter, which this is statistically some of the most difficult, highest percentage style to fight. If he throws another hook in, oh. Oh, look how he's chaining this together. Look at the athleticism, though, of Luan Davis. Oh! Whoa, back fist and the right hand. Here we go. Here we go. That might have been one of the best I've seen here tonight. That was phenomenal. He posted off, turned away, came back with a back fist and a straight hand. Oh, he's been dropped. The right hand dropped him. Ryan Loder looking to follow up here. Looking to be the first man to beat Luan Davis. Big elbows. Luan Davis survives again. Yep, if he can hold that arm down a little bit, elbow push across, he might be able to get up. And now Ryan's trying to secure a position. Maybe even look for the beat down. If he can, can secure that arm down, look, he's going for yes, it. Yes, he's trying to. If he gets that arm down, Luan's in a lot of trouble. What an opening. One minute and 40 seconds we have here in this middleweight Grand Prix. Our main event will be in the middleweight semifinals as well. Shane Subnoski Jr. taking on Ty Guerda. But what a fight this is to see who will vie against one of their men December 16th. 
Working his way really high up the torso here yeah. now, Frank. And that's very good as far as being able to keep away from your opponent's strength, their hips. Now if Luan tries to like hip bump to dig that underhook or to create frame space, he's not gonna be able to. He's gonna have to get him down. Or he's gotta come out the bottom and push him over the top, which he's not able to do because his left arm is holding the back of the head. And now it's basically a battle over that arm closer between the legs that he's kind of framing on the hips a little bit. But the minute Ryan steps over it, it might be the end. Now we get to halfway through round number one. That top pressure smothering now. But it gives Luan a bit of time to recover, right? He got jumped by that yes. very short shot. This ain't the worst thing for him, you know. He got rocked, he could gain his uh, wits about him. He's not really taking any damage here. Now, Luan has got now he has the left arm in the right place. If he holds that, pushes all the way to the side of his body, he can do it. There oh, we go. There we go. Oh, he almost had it. He let it go. He's trying to do it from the bottom in Americana. Oh, yeah, if you hear the corner, they say, watch that head and arm. Luan Davis wise to it. Pushes that left arm around the other side of the head. And Loder just gives no space whatsoever. Look at that top pressure. Ryan's doing a great job of taking advantage of being in the top position, not doing anything stupid to get him out of there. My only knock would be like, hey, you've been here on a guy you've hurt, he's kind of recovered. Let's improve our position so we can do some more damage. It's hard to do damage from pure side control because you have to either hold your opponent's hips or you got to secure their shoulders. Well, if I pass your legs, I got to hold your shoulders. And the only way to do that is with my arm unless I step over and put you in the beat down position or top crucifix, right? So until then, it's hard to really hit people. So unless he goes and tries to push for the mount, or that arm right there that he's trying to drive the elbow down, if he can get that arm between his legs, Ryan Lotus' legs, then he can pin Luan in a position where he'll be able to uninterruptedly rain down hell with his elbows. 40 seconds now, clock ticking. I mean, this is definitely a round easily won by Ryan. But also, too, if it doesn't go his way as it goes on, he might see this as an opportunity where he really let Luan Davis off the hook. And we saw just how dangerous Luan was as well. He looked good, escaped some of those takedowns, and then also came out with some good shots. Final 10 seconds, round number one. One round in the books, Frank. We will take a look back at some of the action very, very shortly there. But a composed... Luan Davis coming this back. This incredible. is the escape, look at that. Yeah, he posted off, threw a back fist, left hook, but then came here, got ran into a, a right jab, and almost got knocked out there. Ryan started finishing, but then he smothered himself too close and wasn't able to create enough space to get enough velocity to really get the referee to come in there and save him. And from there, rode about in side control, but honestly, that Luan more or less survived that more than Ryan Loder controlled it. So we will be set now. What, what advice would you be giving to Luan Davis now? What, what are the keys? Because you can see it's almost bull rushing from Ryan Loder. He knows as soon as he can get Short to- Short memory. Hey man, you got caught, it happens. You know, obviously, we don't want to get caught with shots, but you can't dwell on it, that round's over with. You're, there's nothing really I would say specifically he was doing a good job of defending the shots There's nothing we can fix really you got caught with a shot short memory go out there and you know compete do what you can do Oh almost an identical start there. They both skipped to their right hand left hand side and then the Side kick into the uh, the midsection from both of them oh, and Again that snapping kick oh it comes up top now Wow Look at that from Luan Davis, but straight away, that's an opportunity for Ryan Loder. Oh, nice framing, he's using the hand to cup away. If Luan gets his head in there, it'll be perfect defense. 
He's got the overhook, he's got wrist control. It's going to be very difficult for Ryan to do anything until he releases that. Oh, oh he, he, gave him the knee. he gave him the knee, Frank. Yeah, that's the thing. Look, throwing a kick or a knee to someone's body, you're giving them a single, too. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you better hope it does damage. And if it doesn't, and right there, that knee didn't do enough damage. All that happened was that Ryan Loder grabbed it and goes, hey, thanks. I didn't have to reach down here and grab it. You brought it to me. He basically knee tapped him right to the ground. Already looking to pass the guard as well. You can see that right leg trying to feed and pass the left leg through and steps over. Oh, he's in mount. Uh, yeah, well, half guard, half guard. Half guard, sorry. Again, nice position here. Here he can let his hands run free a little bit more because he has the half guard position. Oh, the referee gonna stand them back up here, much to the delight of the crowd. Off we go, Luan Davis. He was trying to make something happen. Very big shots, athletic attacks. But he's also got to be aware that that takedown is going to come in as soon as he's off balance, right? Also, the power of Ryan Loader. He's been hurt on his feet now. And so he has to, right there, that right hook, that short right inside hook he's been throwing. I believe that was the kind of shot he caught him in the first round. So if you sit there and go out fighting a wrestler, uh, he's got heavy hands too. Nice sprawl, nice hips there from Luan Davis. Needs to separate, but... Framing well with that arm, keeping the Ryan Loader's hips away from him. But now he needs to use his feet to get his back off the cage. Because, yeah, you're stopping the initial onslaught right here. But now Ryan can pin you there and reset and go for another shot. Real chess match between these two. Luan Davis being tested by the grappling, the wrestling, the pressure of Ryan Loader. Oh, and there's the takedown. And again, this is a great position for Ryan to be in. Half guard against the head against the cage is awesome. The only thing in the world you might have to worry about is a Kimura from the bottom. As long as you don't fall asleep and let the guy really sink it deep, it ain't gonna happen. Who's ever won with a Kimura as well, right, Frank? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is there, but you gotta make sure you just keep your eyes open for it. And then the top guy can just go ahead and now beat him up because your hands can be free. Your legs are now trapping him. You know, we call it a half guard in jiu-jitsu, but wrestlers call it a Turk. The top guy likes having his legs in between to sit on that thigh. So, you know, you know, I talked to Randy about it. He says, oh, I don't call that half guard. I call it half mount. I'm half mounting you. Nice. One minute 20 now, Ryan Loder. Good control here. And he could work like this all day long, Frank, right? Oh, yeah. He's in a great position. His head's controlling, framing, creates enough space to go ahead and do some damage on Luan without expending any energy of himself. I would say go ahead and start maybe trying to do a little bit more without extending himself into danger. I mean, he's winning. Don't do something kamikaze style. But do a little bit more maybe to go ahead and get the finish or at least do enough that the referee doesn't want to start you over. Oh, nice little escape there from Luan, little explosion. Trying to make something to get back to his feet. Yeah, he's got his arm under there to lift up the elbow high. But Ryan, see how he dropped his knees down? That slid his grip down to the hips. And now he can go ahead and attack that far ankle. And he's going to pull his legs out. Oh, good work from Lo uh, Luan, though. No, he was able to put enough weight on it and use that underhook to pull him up with the overhook up to his legs a little bit to avoid it. And now he's framing with his hand. But Ryan is really beating him up with the head position. If I could say one area that he just completely dominated Luan at, his head's always in the right position. Luan's head has not been yet. <laughs> Round two in the books there. Strong, strong round there from Ryan Loader. And this is where mentally Luan Davis has got to dig deep as well, right? Because that's a, a fatiguing round mentally, just to be under that pressure, not to be able to make space to, to do the right things, but not to get the right result. And it's also menacing to know that if I make a mistake, I'm going to be on bottom. This guy's going to be on top of me again. And, and this mistake, he's going to be punished for a long time. It isn't like, it, you know, he's going to get hit and go, okay, well, I can go ahead and recover and change again. There was that knee tap with Luan threw off of the knee. And here again, 
Brian's showing that he has good heavy hands. And add that to the threat of things you have to worry about when you fight him. And this is still five minutes left to play in this middleweight Grand Prix semi-final. Luana showed great defense. He really has. Really, know, right? success. He's doing a good job. It's just Ryan's just doing a better job. This isn't a situation where he's not doing well. He is. It's just the other guy is really good also. So third and final round. Five minutes to decide who will move forward in the middleweight semi-finals. Oh, a nice straight left. Oh. The one looking surprisingly fresh as well, right, Frank? Look yes, at that. He does. For a guy who's been in a bad wrestling. Oh, head kick. Head kick, that caught him. Oh, that mean, caught him. No, he's hurt. He's hurt. He's certainly. Oh, Luan Davis trying to turn this around. Wow, Ryan Loder. 8 2. Big shots there. Now Luan's got to be David. They, careful not to just close the distance for Loder, right? Stay at range. Keep those weapons, those long weapons. The more you can keep the fight right here at this range, this is greatest opportunity for victory. Oh, the straight left as well, working the... Oh, my goodness! There we go, spinning back fist! Wow! Oh, the instincts of Loda kicked in. He ate that and went straight for the clinch. That's four minutes still left of this round. Oh, my goodness. What an opening first minute. What a statement of intent from Luan Davis. Ryan Loda, though, what a chin. What a chin and what a takedown. Just what he needed, Frank. Now he's going to sit here and try to ride around as long as he can. He does not want this fight to go back up to his feet because it's the only danger he's ever been in in the fight is when they're standing neutral. Yeah. Now lewan has got to show some urgency and desperation, take some risks to get back to his feet because the success he was having when he was up there. Those headshots, Frank. Mind-blowing head that he was that versatile, loose, flexible, and powerful yep. in a fight that he's been on the bottom for most Yes. Of not many times when the guy's losing a fight that we actually are singing his accolades of what we're impressed by. Yeah. And Ryan Lodo, I am impressed with that chin. My goodness. Absolutely tested to the max there by the striking of Luan Davis. Luan trying to get back to his feet. Two minutes, 50 seconds now. Power bridge, underhook, backside. The talent in these Grand Prix brackets, Frank, is yes. unreal, right? From Both the these guys are going to be very recognizable names in MMA if they stick with it. They're probably the, uh, very much these guys going to fight again. You see the talent both of these young fighters have. And both are just starting to really come into their own. And the one, really, I see a huge upside on him. Ryan has showed great power, great fortitude. Showcase the wrestling we knew he had and some other tricks up his sleeve. It really has been an outstanding battle so far. There's still two minutes, five seconds left of it. Oh, look at that stepping over there. Yes. Loder is so fluid with those movements and these little transitions that give him maximum control. Yep, right now he's like in a backwards half guard. This is really bad for Luan. If he doesn't identify that his hips are trapped in a place where he really can't create any offense. He needs to get that bottom leg out. There, there you go. go. Look at that. Good work from Luan Davis. And we'll repeat it once again. The winner of this will go on to fight the winner of our main event, the rematch that sees Shane Subnoski Jr. take on Ty Guerda. Guerda looking for redemption. Subnoski looking really Oh, he's got the wrist oh. right from top. At this point, Luan can give up his back, whatever it takes to get back up to his feet. And he does that, Frank, exactly as you said it. Because uh, uh, lose the decision or lose by choke, you still lose. Oh, what? give the switch. Oh, oh, committed to it, Frank, but overcommitted. Well, he did what he said. You really got to get your hips out for a switch to work. And he committed to it, but it's still difficult to make up that, you know, you, that's a pure wrestling move against a guy who has a lot of years of wrestling. Oh, a little trip there as well. Ryan Loder loves that word. work. You know what? I, I know Ryan's going to come out and pull out the victory here. He's won this fight. Uh, I'm impressed with what he's able to do. It's very sound. His wrestling's phenomenal. He's definitely... Oh! Oh! oh. 
Look at that reversal. 30 seconds, Frank. 30 seconds left. And still Luan Davis is finding something from somewhere to try and get out of the grasp, the reach of Ryan Loder. He might lose, but he's not beaten, Frank. No. Talk about moral victory. He's not going to get his oh, hand raised. Oh, look at these elbows to the midsection. Oh, my goodness. Luan Davis finishing the fight with these. Woo! What a battle, Frank. Really? There was no losers in that fight. That was a good fight, man. Really? That was a good fight. I mean, just every time, I mean, Luan, no matter what, Late on, I mean, Ryan, it would, be, if I was his coach, I'm like, hey, relax. You got the fight one, side control. Just make sure you don't. And then Luan pulls that explosive reversal. You're like, wow. He does not want to go away. He fought to the last how second. How much talent? Honestly did. Dude, how much talent was in that cage there tonight? That is. I think both these guys are going to have to. Huge Know futures. who they each other are, because both of them are very talented. There's no way they're not fighting again. Wow, this has been an exquisite match here. I will give you a little bit of bad news though as we move on. The fight with Jose Delgado and Arthur Duflo has been withdrawn. I'm not exactly what's happened, but something with Arthur Duflo has meant that Jose Delgado and him will not make the walk tonight. Disappointed in that, but still plenty of talent and this to be decided. The judges will score it and it looks like Ryan Loder will take it and earn his spot. But amazing stuff here. And once again, you saw the little sign there for the F3 Energy. If you want to get 50% off, go to f3energy.com and use the code UFL3. And you will get 50% off your order. Just waiting now for our ring announcer to make his way inside the cage to announce this one. What a night it has been. That will leave us with three fights. The Bantamweight Grand Prix semi-final between Zurina Ture, Ture and Claire Guthrie, then Amun Cosme and Val Valodia Avazin in our main event, the middleweight fight. And we'll see who will take on the winner of this one. Let's hand it now to the MC, Mr. Michael Vale. We go to the judges' scorecards. Sean and Dallas Hall scored about 29-27. And both judges, Brad Frank and Greta Cox, scored about the same 29-28 for your winner by unanimous decision. And now moves on to the finals of the UFL Middleweight Grand Prix. Ryan Louder. Wow, congratulations. Uh, do you enjoy that? Being in a fight like you were just in, that was a war where you go back and forth. You were dominating the fight, but you were still in a war. Are you enjoying those moments? I love it here. It's, it's when I feel alive. You know, there's not a lot of times where you're really in the moment present. When you're in the cage, that's, that's the deal. You're always present. Now, there's things that went we thought would go in that fight. There were some surprises. We were all surprised, both for and against. Were there any surprises you felt as the fight was going on? He's tougher than I thought, for sure. His wrestling got a lot better. And yeah, hats off to Luhan. Great job. Between your power knocking him down and then his escapes towards the end, we were very impressed with that too. Was there a moment in your mind where you were thinking, why won't you go away? Uh, yeah, right at the beginning, I thought I, when I dropped him, he was going to cover up. But he's not that type of person, so appreciate that. He's able to bring a showcase to great C2 Warriors fight that. Your winner, Ryan Loader! I got some more to say though. Uh, I want to thank all my sponsors. I want to thank Alex Munoz, my cornerman. I want to thank. Grappling boys, Fluffy, Max, Elliot, I love you guys. Uriah Faber, uh, also my sponsors, everyone. Uh, True Mash Casino Hotel, thank you very much. Um, if you have any mental health problems or you have anything that is weighing on you, please DM me. One of my sponsors will help you out. If you're not in this fight alone, please, please reach out. And I'm not kidding. I'm not just up here saying something. I've had a couple people reach out and I really appreciate it because I know how it feels to be in that dark area. So please reach out, find help. There's a world of support. Just gotta ask. So thank you. Awesome words, man. Thank you. 